The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, Monday, the 26th of April. Dow's up uh, 23 at 32,750. Look, this is not a great pattern at all. You've gone up in this pyramid pattern, almost like an Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. And now you're storing, but look, that nine period moving average is still above the 14 period moving average, even though we're making low lows and low highs. Days young, we can see what happens today. I was anticipating, based on the Chapman Wave trend gauge, high reading on Friday, that there would be a, a good rally in the S&P futures to help the general market. And even though we are short uh, one of the indices, I'm looking at this and saying it's a process. And you can see the process. Look, he has the one minute chart, that nine period moving average, even though we made a doji, two doji candles at that peak D, I did use a phantom peak right over there. That's why that's still red. And then I lifted it up here because it eventually did go to that D. But in this particular instance, what we're looking at is this is a rebound and 12 points in the E mini after being down so sharply recently. I just say that that really comes into the category of bounce. And I spoke, I, I mentioned in the den, I, I was asked, is this a potential two, a two click session? Meaning, a lot of work I've done over the last six months or more, actually, it's about the last year, I've been trying to figure out the, the criteria that gives you a really good chance of getting the low in the morning sometime, going one click, having a reasonable stop and then holding it all the way through until maybe Eastern time, 2 o'clock. Very often it goes all the way through to the close. If it's that strong at 2 o'clock, it could go all the way through to the close, and then you click and you're done. So I don't know if the, you don't actually know. All you know is that look at this 10-minute E-mini chart, and the reason why I'm taking a little time here is because this is exactly the process that I said I'm anticipating based on the nine-period moving average over the 14 and all the different indices. So let me just show you. Here's the 10-minute chart. When it crossed positive at about 7.40 this morning, around about 43.82.85 uh, in the E-mini, uh, it ran all the way to the 43, almost 43.90. It went to 43... Yeah, it did go to 43.90, but then it pulled back to the 43.82 level. Um, but look what happened. That green nine-period moving average stayed green, even though there were three, can four candles underneath. Isn't that remarkable? It didn't go pink. The MACD held its support. The on-balance volume held its support. The uh, stochastic held its support. Relative strength held and look what happened. You got the screaming rally from 43.82 to the high just a moment ago at about 44.03. So the answer is yes, it's a, it's a tremendous possibility. But I would do it in, in other words, if you had a couple of positions, absolutely right here, I would, I would definitely take something off. This is part of money management. I'm not going to say, hey, this is fantastic. This could be one of those uh, two-click sessions. Um, I'm just holding it regardless. No, you're still going to use money management if you want to be successful at this. So the answer is yes, it could be. But I've just typed in, uh, I, oh, I, w I wish I had time now. To, uh, should I make time? Yeah, I'm going to make time. So let me show you what I did. So over there, the 43.80 level on this re retracement at 9.30, it turns around. Um, I, I don't want to explain the whole thing. Other than Look, the 9 period moving average crossed positive. It went from peak A to leg B. Remember, it's a leg B all the way. I didn't do anything at this particular double top with two exact, look at this, um, 40, 43, 94, 25, 43, 94, 25. That was at 940 and then 941. This is a one-minute bar. I didn't want to do anything there. But when we got to that leg C, uh, this leg, actual leg peak right here, which I had called leg B, I said, you know, I, the way the nine-period moving average is acting, 
This is really fabulous action. But I would just go sequentially in the alphabet. That's one of the techniques that I teach in my in my webinars and in my um, analysis of the Chapman methodology. So I decided I would make that a phantom peak, and therefore I'd say, in the Chapman methodology, it's a legitimate phantom peak. Therefore, change the color to red to say, that's not real. You didn't make a peak. But you, you're dealing in 25 cent increments. It's did you have a little hiccup? In any of the technicals, well, the on balance volume gave you that hiccup right there. So I used it. It went to leg C, and it went to what I call leg D. And right at that point, I said, okay, one of the positions, money management, got to get out. But that doesn't mean to say it's not a necess necessarily a potential two click position. That's part of money, manage money, money management. And then what I do is, in the chat, wait, if it does go to their D, and so often if you use a phantom peak, It'll actually be strong enough, especially when the 9 is so strong over the 14, especially in the MACD is so good, especially when you get a Chapman wave squash where the stochastic has run up so quickly that you get the squash. That's the reason why I put the stochastic below the MACD. It's the only reason uh, other than clarity. Um, and then what happened is that tells you you should go very quickly to a peak A, to a peak B, peak C, and then slow down as the torque of the stochastic hands you over to the uh, momentum of the uh, of the MACD. So then what I do is I automatically slide it over and say, okay, that is the legitimate D, that is the legitimate C, and that becomes a legitimate B and not a phantom peak. I just keep the B to say, this is one that I did use, and now what it's done is gone to an E, and the, te the technical analysis I did here, seeing that this little hiccup right here, 10.05, 10.04, was lower than those left side lows, I said, I don't think this is a brand new A. Everything about it has a weak MACD, a weak stochastic, nine period moving average is holding okay, but it's really starting to weaken. I'm going to call this a peak F with a really good chance that this is the top in the one minute chart, and it corresponds to the doji candle peak E in the uh, 10 minute chart, and the five minute chart screamed to a D, and then it just popped up to that E, and now everything's in sync to say right here is where you can expect some kind of a consolidation. All right? And that will take us to the 1020 time frame. And at 1020, we'll see, is there a brand new uh, series of, of, of buy signals that come in, et cetera, et cetera. But technically, this has given a peak F. You've gone negative, And now we'll see what happens. Well, that's in the one-minute chart. And a leg. It's still only a leg E. We haven't got a confirmation that it's a peak. Well, we have to wait for the full five minutes. A peak, and then we won't have a confirmation that there's even a down candle other than just a rest of period. And there's still a leg E in the 10 minute chart. That's how I like to do it. Now, why did it take that moment? To show you this is exactly what we're doing here. Look, the MACD, strong. Stochastic, strong. On balance volume, not that great, but still pretty strong considering that it ran all the way up to that leg D, then Chapman Way Peak D on the 16th of. Um, 16th of June at 34,588. Uh, then you've got Chapman, uh, inverse or reverse, upside down, Chapman Wave Roman candle. All those criteria were met the next day by gapping down. Then you've got another Chapman Wave red, Chapman Wave Roman candle, and all the criteria were met. And now what we've done is we've gone three. This is, this is the fourth candle so far that is underneath the low of that particular candle of the 20th of June. I'll be right back. Dow's up one. It's a bees up 10. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. That's also a question came in. I'm not sure whether that question came in before or after I started talking about the uh, two-click session. Um, how would I define it? My definition is if you can identify through the technicals that you're looking at, that there's a really good chance that a low that's set could be 6.30 in the morning, it could be that 8.30 news report, it could be at 10 o'clock, whatever it is, that there's a particular pattern that makes a low, preferably it's before the open, the market actually opens. You could click on, well, if you're using, if you're using say, the three times long, because this is what people do if they're going to do any trading at all, they'll maybe have the... Uh, SOXS with the three times short or, or SOXL three times long, the uh, semiconductors or the SBXL or SBXS uh, long or short, the um, future, the uh, S&P, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And you can buy at the bottom. Well, we don't know it's the bottom, but you buy what you think is a low. And as I say, it's preferable that it's way early. It's early so that, remember, a lot of people say, oh, I'm just happy as a claim getting the middle. I always say, yeah, the middle is great. But isn't it better to try to get the outer edges, the top or the bottom? You remember, we made that peak D in the Dow. That was a leg D on that Friday. And then the Monday we pulled back. And everything about it said to me, that is a D. It's going to be serious. Um, this is where you should be shorting exactly here because we've got the lows for I don't know how many years now. Uh, at the low, we still have the, uh, holding the October low in the diamonds and the uh, UDOW. Um, we, we've got the low in the uh, IAI, that's the broker dealer ETF back in October. Oh, that was back in, yeah, that was that March of 2020. April, we got the low in the DBA. When you get the low or the high, it gives you that leeway that said, you know how you make a low and then you, if you're right, it shoots up and then it gets really choppy. It makes the dreaded H, a successful H or whatever it is, or V-shaped pattern, but it pulls back before it goes to higher highs and higher lows. You want to have that security. So the chances are that if you get in low enough or high enough, that, that period where it's so choppy that it just gets taken. Now you have to get back in, you have to get out, you have to get back in. So the idea is you want to get in at what you think is a really important low. And then as it moves up, so 
look, as I said before, here's this, uh, now we're making the dreaded H in the one minute chart. And all of this applies, I'm doing this now in the in the live because this, this applies, it's a fractal, it applies to the daily chart, weekly chart, monthly chart, makes no difference. And as we're looking at this, if the um, E-mini trading it up now only six points at 43.95, if it suddenly starts to trade, I don't mean just nick it, but trade under 43.91, Wow, you've got a peak E in the 10-minute chart, a peak E in the 5-minute chart, a peak F with a, a head inverse head and shoulders. <laughs> you know, now it could pull back. You don't know. But look how strong the 9 is in the in the 5-minute chart and the 10-minute chart, the green 9-period moving average over the black 14-period moving average. That says there is a chance that this oversold condition has a little bit more of an upside. But that's what I'm saying. So the two-click session is you get in at the low, and then you, if you can survive this whole period between, I'd say, 9.55 a.m. to 10.20, but preferably, preferably I'd say not 10.20. I'd go to all the, like like 10.40, and that second, that really the third part of the trading session starts um, after the first hour. Then I think you, th there's a chance that you could actually have another buy signal, buy to buy mode, and hold, uh, especially if the five and 10 minute chart are holding their nine and 14s very nicely, and the price expands over the previous high. So that's what I'm saying. And the real preferable thing is to put your buy in early in the morning or your sell if it's, you think the market's gonna go down for the rest of the day, and just put in a stop, and as soon as you've got a really nice profit, make the stop something you're comfortable with, and I don't do this. I'm starting to practice to do it. Um, and then not look at your screen for that position. You can look at it for others, but not for that position. So all I can say is that's the technique. I'm trying to develop a plan that says these are the, these are the things, the criteria that you look at. Wow, it changes. I mean, when you're in this oversold condition, now let me go back to the general market. When you're in an oversold condition, because for five or six sessions, uh, look, I've got the stock weave communications. I can't remember now if in my overview video that I do for subscribers about an hour long video every weekend, I added this or if I did it last week. But the, these are screamers. Well, it's out of the screamer category because now it's over 10. It's at 10.23 up a dollar 10. But right here, it was holding C. The nine was so fantastic. I thought, and then I th overthought it, thinking, Weaver Communications in the communications area when AT and T and Comcast and all these other communications stocks have just been hammered. Uh, is this Weave W E A V E Weave Communications? Anyway, wrong. Do your homework, just look at the chart and stick with it. And I just want to see, I think that that made by a penny, 802, 802. Yeah, there it is. So here's your leg D. What a leg. And also, it was in leg D like this. I thought, come on, can it keep going? Yes, it can. It can, it can, it can. So the other question was um, I want you to look at this DBI. DBI is. Uh, Designer brands. Oh, I did this last night. And this morning, I had to shut down Trade Station because it suddenly froze up. I don't know what's going on with all my different thing, electronic stuff that's going on these days. It's not pleasant. I, I do my work. I would love for their, all these different facets to do their work. But oh, no, 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 no. So look, this is a, I remember doing this last night. So this is a, I think that was by, by Penny. A, B, yes, I think it was B, that was C, and that was D. And this was saying to me, hey, this thing loves to go to a D. Daily chart, I don't know about the weekly because this is only in leg B. Um, and this is DBI design. There, here again, I thought about last night. I thought, Should I put it in for subscribers this morning? A beautiful screamer. <clears throat> it closed at about 9.50 on uh, Friday. MACD was good. Stochastic was good. The on balance volume was good. Everything was good. And then I thought, designer brands? Designer? I've, I've looked at this once before when it was on its way up there. Well, look what it did today. It's up 3.73%, up 35 cents at 9.88. So I don't, I, I say, if you can get in at the bottom, look how much room you've got when, you, when you're making decisions 
as it starts to rally. All right, so here's one. Just keep it on your list if you want. Um, it's certainly on mine on the next pullback. It's already gone to leg D, but 10.30 is the 200-period exponential moving average. That looks to me like it'll become a magnet if this can get to the 998 area. All right, so enough with that. Now, let's, let me show what I'm looking at. Dow. Dow now down 16. I, this is really, this is when you consider what we've done, a horrible reversal candle on Friday, the whatever that was, 16th. And since then, we're making lower lows and lower highs. I don't know about today, but so far it's a lower high, but I don't know if it's going to be a lower low. Look at the S&P. It hasn't given any signal yet. Today, if it's close as negative, it'll become a sell signal, probably a sell signal, but it's holding beautifully. But it is off as high, and we keep doing the same thing. Look at that. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, here's a question came in from the Den Napa, which is uh, Dow Corn Portfolio. And this is our, uh, our colleague over there in the, uh, in the Den who loves to look at the biotech. So I'm looking at this and I'm looking, what, what on earth? There? First, I do the analysis. Then I look at the price. Then I look at the what it is. Duck horn portfolio. I'm thinking, what kind of a biotech is that? Well, it's wines. It's made this arch formation holding. Yes, the left side doji candle low in the uh, 12, uh, I'm guessing 1270s. Nicely, it's got at 1312. <coughs> 
This is the pattern that if it holds well, can produce really good results on a trading basis. To break to a new level above 1465 to say, hey, I'm done with all that downside action in the 13s and 14s, a lot has to happen. I don't see it happening just yet until, give me a yell when you see this at 1363. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's at 50 cents, it's a couple of percentage points higher, but until it does that, that left side law, I think, is, is still a target. So, yeah. Okay, in the meantime, yeah, we want to go to the high-grade copper. High-grade copper at this point is, oh, I had to do that. Oh, man, do I, did I lose all that information? That is so frustrating. It doesn't take me more than a second just to put it in, but I'm going to put it in with a down arrow. High-grade copper has pulled back under the 14-period moving average, but the 9 is still above it. But the price for the second time is sharply below I'm considering this a sell signal. I don't yet have, have it upgraded to a sell mode. But if that continues, and I showed this on uh, Sunday when I did my overview for subscribers, uh, would the iShares Global Timber Forestry, remember I like to put these two together because they are international uh, measures of business activity or building activity. Um, yeah, this is what you got to be careful of. Now, besides the fact that this has got a dreaded H pattern in the weekly chart, for those of you who know my pattern called the falling axe formation, you know, we've seen this. It happens very often with the gold, the GDX or the GLD. It's the inverse of the falling axe formation. It's the inverse, Chapman Wave falling axe, which becomes like an H pattern that goes to an M pattern. And that just says... If the iShares Global Timber Forestry ETF actually reverse sharply lower and the weekly chart closes underneath the low, this is wood, W-O-O-D, under 68.75. I'm going to have to make it under 67. I've got to give it a little room. Under, sorry, 60, 67. If it closes under that, then that left side low that was made all the way back in September of 2022 of 63.78 becomes a target. Right here, it's imperative. Do you see how what happened, uh, um, Dan? You were looking at that H pattern in uh, what was the stock we were looking at just a moment ago? Napa, was it Napa? Yeah, so look, it held just barely, but it held, so it had a good rally. And the rally says if you're holding the left side low in the H pattern, then you can, and you haven't taken it out or touched it, then you can rally, but you need to close three out of four, three out of four bars above the high that was made in the arch, or well, two out of three. Usually I like to extend it if I can, but two out of three above the high of the 23rd of uh, May. And look what happened. It went once, closed below it, once above it, twice above it, third time it came down. So that's where you do an assessment, and the assessment said that has to be considered because it was that's the low on the left side back in April or beginning of May. So it never took it out. So this continues your extension of an uh, of a an alternate count, E slash B. Now you look at the technicals. The technicals have weakened horribly, but today is a good day, up 47 cents to 70.34. But the way I'm looking at this, it looks to me like timber forestry ETF wood is starting to deteriorate in the technicals. All right. So I did that. I did that. I had a question about, uh, where was it? Oh, could you look at the SLX? So I didn't do this on the weekend because I wanted to do a little bit more work yesterday on these, and I did do some work, but I don't have it quite updated as I thought I had. This is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Look at this weekly chart, how it's rallied, hasn't taken out this left side high, it's done the H pattern, now it's attempting a second one, but look, the nine period moving average has cro crossed, and I think it's today, not Friday, but today, to give it an L. I have to wait the whole week to see if this L, which means long, means that the just this indicator, the 914, has gone positive. The MACD is still weak, it's very close to turning up. Stochastics improved, and on balance volume is very weak. The daily chart has good MACD. Lousy uh, stochastic, a relative strength is okay in the 52-ish area. On balance volume is quite pathetic. And that says to me, where's the nine-period moving average? Very strong. 
and you've got a very nice rally. And that's what I was saying to subscribers. It is such a diverse market at this particular time that when I looked at, say, Caterpillar, Caterpillar had pulled back but was still holding quite nicely. If I look at PAVE, which is the PAVE, which is the ETF, for it's the Global X Infrastructure Development, and um, it's the ETF. It went to a peak D uh, last week. Today is just under it, but it's holding very well. And that's the reason why I said we've got to be very selective. We want to keep our longs. We want to add to the longs when, when there's a sharper pullback. And at the same time, the shorts we're going to go for at this particular point, just for an ETF. And we'll have a smaller position in a three times short. And that's the way I'm doing it right now. Um, we tried that with the semiconductor index, got stopped out for a very small loss. I did not expect that the SMHs, look, here's the SMH, that the rally would give such a strong inverse. He has, a, he has an alternate count that says a potential peak D. Would give such a strong inverse uh, three to one short position uh, slide. So the SOXS, whoa, don't type it there, type it here. The SOXS, and all I'm expecting here in the market generally is a, is a bounce. And then we start to move down. I thought that we would hold this nine period exponential moving edge. We went under it with 10.63. And this is a leg eight to the upside right here. I think that this is going to go higher. That's my what my eye says is for the first time, the SOX that's three times short, the SMHs, because that pink nine period moving average is moving steadily higher. It hasn't crossed positive yet. It's got a long way to go. Look at the MACD, the way it's moving up. Look at the stochastic at 45%. Look at the unbalanced volume. And this is just suggesting to me that you have a situation here Forget about this. Oh, I'll have to do that again. Forget about this weekly chart. Having gone to a trough G, um, G slash C actually, oh, it's not G slash B. But this is the one you want to focus on. And it just says to me, if you're looking at the SMHs, this is now on a short-term basis. I'm talking about daily. That's not near-term intraday. This is a short-term basis. If you look at the weekly chart, it's still very strong. Look, still very, look at that cluster formation just under the 159s high that was on the left side, way back the, the in November high that was made. Look at this. The high was 155.94. Still very good action, but in a digestive phase. So that's what I'm looking at. I think if the uh, SMHs start to trade under 145, I think we've got we've got more of a downside move to go. Dow's down 44, has to be down one and a half, would be like, as a chapter five. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee.
at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, folks, we're back. So the SP is down 575. Let me just say, I always look at three core patterns straight up, straight down, that's one. Cup formation, that's two. Uh, an arch formation, that's three. And a mix of one and two or one and three. Yes, one and three, the dreaded H pattern, where you come down sharply, then you have a bounce, and it fails at a peak A or a B, and then it takes out that left side low, called the dreaded H because it can go a lot lower. This is the very positive Y pattern because if it takes out that left, reverse Y, if it takes out that left side high, it can go a lot higher. Well, what happened here? I discussed it live on air, and I said, yes, that dreaded H pattern, how it holds this level over here is going to be really important. Now, I didn't have a chance to do this. I probably should have done this while I was talking. What I would normally do is I'd grab the left side low. I look at bar symmetry. It's just a really important component. And then I look for a particular candle, and I'm over here, right? I have no idea what's on the right. And I'm thinking, okay, if this takes out that left side low, where would it go to? So I try to get an, a visual measurement, and I say, if this is bar symmetry, and this is my plumb line right here, at the two candle doji, starting off with the leg F, goes to peak F doji, a second even tinier doji. That just says to me, watch out, there's distribution going on there. No, you can't get higher. Then what I do is I grab that, and all I do is I go click. You don't have to have the rectangle. You can just have a, a line, it's good enough. And then I am push it to the right, and I say, okay, if that's going to be my target, then I'm going to join a particular peak on the left side and see if I can get it to go uh, to where I think that line goes. Uh, just for the moment, I'm going to say extend it. I don't want to move it to the right until I finish this. Uh, wait, 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 extend to the right. There, I'll extend to the right. There we go. So, and I'm going to join this green line right here to the right line with the plum, plum line in the middle, right? That's the bar symmetry, like a mirror image. And it should go, I think I'm going to miss it because I, I didn't want to move to the right. But I would draw it so that this particular peak that I've chosen right there takes you as a Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line. And usually I make it uh, green, uh, pink on the downside, green on the upside, and a dashed line. And let's just see where that takes you. This is, uh, there's nothing I can make up. This is, this is what I do. I choose the candle that I think is most important at a peak or just around a peak. If it's a doji candle, I have to look at it carefully. Then I do a measured number of bars to the right, on the left side to the midpoint should equal the number of bars to the right side. So let's see where this goes. All right, so I, this one here, it looks like it was perfect, but it wasn't perfect because I extended it and I couldn't really see it. I didn't want to extend it out. I would have gone right there and I would have put an X. X marks the spot right there. I mean, isn't that fascinating? How does the market know? How, I mean, how does it know to have that kind of symmetry? And now what's happening? You've got the, v -W, uh, the W or V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. Stochastics turned up. On-balance uh, starting to improve. And there's a bit of a bounce. And it's called a gray leg A. Why is it gray? I don't have a buy signal or a buy mode or anything yet. I've just got the first turnaround. 
So I just thought I'd do that live. And the reason why I want you to do it is because we can do that here. Uh, this is the SMHS. So the SMHS, oh, where was the chart that I wanted to look at? I think it's the diamonds. Let me just go to the Dow Diamonds. That's one. Oh, yes, look at this. I typed this in and I spoke about it the other day and I said, I don't believe this particular pattern, even though it's got all the criteria that a lot of people use for head and shoulders. They are different. You want a slightly lower right side or slightly higher, whatever it is. But I look at it and just say it's real simple. You've got a left side shoulder here. Let's just make that red so you know what I'm Oh, make it pink. Pink? Yeah. And you've got the head right here. And then you've got your matching shoulder on the right side at about the same level, actually. And that makes this the neckline right here. Well, it turns out that in the diamonds, look at the price, look at the, the symmetry. The number of bars from this weekly chart, I have the 16th, the week of the 16th of December at 148.22. You come down, that's your midpoint right there. And you go to the right, it's almost the same, like a mirror image pattern. And what does it do? It goes to this high in leg D. Remember, this is a peak A and that's a peak B. This is an A and a B, but it's below Oh, I lost it. I'll have to do it again. A and B. But it's below the previous one. And I haven't got a confirmation because the stochastic is going under 80%. But this is a buy mode. Uh, yes, I call it. That's great because it's underneath that one. And then it goes. There's your next peak. Below. You remember, this is your starting point right here for the count. Right here. Right there. So, that's peak A, peak B. Peak A, peak B. Peak A. Peak B, peak C, and finally get your D. In exactly the number of bars, but it missed it by about a point or so, about two points, going to that left side high. And look, the nine is still holding beautifully. Uh, the MACD is just turning negative. It is, it's, it's quite good. Stochastics at 81%. That's good. On balance volumes are very weak. So I just thought I'd show you some of the patterns that you can use in your, you don't need any spectacular um, equipment or software or anything you can just do. It's very quick, very easy to do. I don't like to do it over and over with because TradeStation um, closed shut down without saving everything. Even though I saved it, it if it's the spur of the moment, it activates something that just says, oops, uh, a fault. And then you've got a, a, an announcement that says uh, it'll close down Easy language, uh, easy language, isolated services has encountered a problem. We are sorry for the inconvenience. I've been having this for over 20 years, and I've notated this very quickly each time, but I'm getting tired of it. I don't know how much more I can do. Notating, notating. I should, I should, I, I should have my original, going from Supercharts to, um, to TradeStation platform, it's the same, same company, when, and then it was taken over. Um, I should have my ones going back on a daily basis all the way to 2000. But I don't. There's there. Some of them are there somewhere, but not where I can see them. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, and I'm not complaining about actual trade sessions. It's, pretty, it's a really good. I mean, look at all these different techniques and uh, different tools you've got. It's a fabulous platform. It's just that I note and nothing here is automated. You know, with Steve Rose, if he's had a shutdown suddenly, he can come back and he'd have all his travel wave notations right there. I do mine by hand. And one of the reasons is, I've look, for instance, how am I going to program that A and that B, that C, and that D when that A is under those previous A's because I have to tell it that that was my original starting point. It's going to give me all sorts of readings for things that I've never looked at, I don't even know about, that has nothing to do with my methodology. That's the problem. That's why I still do it by hand. Anyway, enough with that. Uh, I didn't want to spend time on it, and I did. So let's go back to our charts. Now I want to do some other things. So the TLT, I didn't want to take too much time on TLT either because I just think that the rates are in a range. Look, here we are. It's in a range. It's gone to a D. It's holding steady. Uh, nine's over the 14. MACD's good. Stochastic's at 76. Not great, but it's good. Unbalanced volume's not good at all. Rent of strength is okay. So I'm just, I'm sure that I'm, I've been saying it for about a year now that rates are stuck in a range. I don't see them breaking out yet to the upside. I don't see them breaking to the downside. In the rectangle pattern, what we're looking at is a lot of the action that we've been looking at for the last 
many weeks, in fact, for the last month or so, has been underneath the midpoint of the break now. I'll be back. Dow's down 47. So you know. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is the last section. I just wanted to show you. Look, so the 10-minute E-mini, uh, look at the nine period, how strong it was, and it's still very strong. And look at this really nice candle. This is like a Chapman Wave, uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle on the upside. If the E-mini closes above, uh, 4392 for two out of the three next three candles, 10 minute candles, then that 4395 200 period moving average could be hit again. So, um, just one step at a time. But isn't it interesting? You had this sharp move down from the high of the day, 4403, round number, I believe, and then comes all the way down to the 4380 level. Here it is at 4391, and that nine period is still active meaning that if this was a two-click session you were basing it on the nine EMA, that one, as I said, if you if you had a couple of positions, and one was a trading, one absolutely on the one-minute chart, you had to get out, just money management. Um, and this one, you could just hold it and say, hey, if you haven't taken me out, if you're in, in the 40, uh, above 43.75 and you're still holding, that's the one that would be the two-click session. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. All right. So with that said, we've got a couple of things that we did. Technically, I want to just show you. Um, I'll do a lot more tomorrow. I wanted to show you Amazon. Amazon did very nicely um, 
on fr Thursday, then again on Friday at Doji Candle, and now it's extended. Now it's gone to this leg D, alternate count, leg D, leg C in the weekly. That means it's still <laughs> very, very strong, even if it pulls back some. Uh, so that's Amazon. Let's just go to the, oh, what was it? I wanted to go Apple. Oh, I did Apple a little earlier on. Apple's gone to a C. I said if it goes higher than this, which it did on Friday, that I can only call that a C, leg C. So there is still strength, and it's, it's isolated strength in various stocks, but it's important to, to, to monitor it because I don't want to have, make a blanket statement. I'm saying this is a selective correction that I'm looking at, and I think it's going to go on for about another week or so. Hey, have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programming. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter.